having me to share at this Black Employee Network event. And um, when I got the invitation, I should say that I was very excited. I was really excited for three reasons. And the first reason was that um, it's not often many of us get to be in a room filled with black people in a professional setting in a city like Toronto. So that speaks to an opportunity to keep community and foster that same word we talked about more than once tonight, foster representation. So two things I'm very passionate about. The next reason is that it was not Black History Month. <laughs> yes, I, I thought to myself, way to go TD. Not just checking the box. You know, don't get me wrong. I totally believe in setting aside a time to re recognize, remember, and celebrate. But if it is only in February, the shortest and the coldest month, <laughs> that you know I am black, then I have an issue with that. <laughs> Which brings me to my third reason, and my the favorite reason is that your theme, Black Excellence 365, I thought it was an amazing theme. I think I'll see it one of these days. So I wish to share with you, I'm not doing any big deep cut talks, so don't you know, take out any pen or any notepad. We're not doing that this evening. I just want to share with you a few reminders that have assisted me in my personal um, growth and, and path to excellence. And the reminder number one is to understand who you are. I speak a lot about this concept when I do workshops on equity, diversity, and inclusion because we are inclined to gather and study others. We are big on SWOT analysis, needs assessment, market projections. We are really big on trying to figure out how do we determine what people want and how do we get it to them. Frequently, we invest in understanding the business, the company. We do the asks. I'm loving that, the ask. Are we doing the ask? But sometimes we, we neglect to understand who we are. We neglect to understand self. And who you are plays a major part in your 365 um, excellence. If I ask you, who are you? Some of you tell me, I'm the branch manager, I'm the retail manager, I'm the VP, I'm the senior VP. Well, that is not who you are, really. <clears throat> that is a title or a label that TD uses to sort us and to make sure we are organized, which is necessary, right? But if I ask, if, I, if you ask me who I am, I'll tell you I am black, I'm a black man. And some, some of you may say, duh, no, it's not duh. <laughs> because, because, not because I present as black, mean I identify as black, but that's for a workshop. We'll talk about that the next time. <laughs> <laughs> so when you understand some of those issues we have, because people present and they identify differently, okay? So if you ask me who I am, I'll say to you, I'm black. I'm an immigrant, I'm a Christian, I'm Jamaican by birth, I'm a teacher, I'm an older of three degrees, and I'll say to you also that I am gay. Why? Because knowing and understanding who you are is essential for your growth and excellence. It is what defines you. It's your passion. It's, 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 it's your ethics. It's your strengths, your abilities. Because who you are impacts how you lead. Reminder number two, work on your dreams. I talk about the dreams a lot. Work on your dreams and prepare for the next level. And whenever I do a workshop and I talk about dreams, people go, oh, we're talking about dreams today. Yes, we're talking about dreams today. Why? Because dreams are reality, and dreams can become reality if you work at your dream. I said to my friends sometimes, I said, I am practically living my dream. And they look at you like weird. If you know me, you know I am practically living my dream. Some of the things I do today, I thought about as a little boy growing up in Portmore, Jamaica, little poor community back in, in Waterford, Jamaica. I said I want to be a doctor one day, a PhD. I am one today. It was a dream. I have the paper. <laughs> so, you know, thank you. So, working at your dream means working at your now. It means working at your now. Many of us, we have big dreams about what we hope to accomplish. We want positions, we want um, 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 increase in our salary, that kind of stuff. But we're not working on those goals and our projects. So I love teaching online. I do a lot of teaching online. I'm sure some of you may be thinking, when he said I taught all those places, you think, what? So many things, he must be overworked. Do I look overworked to you? <laughs> <laughs> I look rested, right? <laughs> As Beyonce would say, I woke up like this. <laughs> so, but you know what it is? It is my passion. Online education is my passion. I work hard at what I do. And years ago, in 2010, I taught my first online course, and they paid $950 for a 14-week course. That's a lot of money. That's a little bit of money. Lots of work, a lot of complaints, a lot of students, right? <laughs> but I, but that wasn't, if the money wasn't my, it wasn't my concern. I had a dream. I knew I wanted to take this to another level. I knew I wanted the skills. I needed the skills. And so I attended every workshop. 
I attended online teaching. I did my engaging research. I read my journals. I worked out of improving my technical and my digital skills. Now I have skills in all three major learning management systems, Blackboard, Moodle, and Desire to Learn. I know them all. I'm an expert in them because I've made myself an expert by working hard at those dreams. Today, some of those same courses that I taught 10 years ago for $950, they pay $8,000 for that course, so. <laughs> See my face? You work hard at your dream, okay? Mastery. So you gain mastery at the level you are at now. That's the trick. You gain mastery at the level you are at now. Reminder number three, build your resume. What is it that you need to get to the next level? Just talk about that. Figure out and ensure you know that. We talk about, I've just heard about mentoring. Mentoring is, is important. And it is key that TD is doing this mentoring program because many of us, we don't have opportunities because nobody's there to show us the ropes. Nobody's there to show us how do we get to the next level. And we think it's a resume, I think it's sometimes working hard, working overtime, or overworking ourselves, when that is actually not it. There are systems in place and there are strategies in place for you to get to the next level. So that mentoring program, please attend it. It works, right? When I figure out that the education that, that I needed, education to be my vehicle to my next level, I studied. Some of you may say, I want to go back to school. If I ask you a question, I said, when last did you look on a website about a course? But you say you want to go, I hear somebody said, that's true. That is true. <laughs> if, you, if, you're, if you want to invest in education, then go forth and build that resume. Look at the next course when it's coming out. Look at what I can do. I'm sure TD has professional development courses. Get into that kind of stuff. You're preparing for Black Excellence 365, right? So I engage in what I call reflective practice. I'm very big on reflective practice. I work fast, I move fast, I'm, I'm, I'm like here and I'm disappearing, I'm like the next place. I'm like a shadow sometimes. <laughs> However, I take time to relax, I do. People say, Andrew, you're always on the go. No, I take time to relax. And I do what I call reflective practice. And reflective practice is defined as an imaginative human activity in which people recapture their experiences, analyze them, evaluate them in order to do two things, grow and change. And there are a whole lot of reflective practice models. If you Google it, you talk about John's reflective model, talk about Brooke Fees, talk about William Glaser. But what I like is Gibbs. You can Google that one. Gibbs model of reflective practice. And it's a cycle. And it starts with a description of what is happening to you. It talks about your feelings, you make an evaluation of your feelings, then you come to an analysis, you really analyze what's going on. Why am I upset today? Why am I not happy? Why every time I reach to work, I feel like I'm gonna kill somebody? Yes, you know, you know that feeling, like what's going on with me? And then you come to a conclusion. Maybe I'm burnt out, maybe I need this, maybe I'm, 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 I've applied four times, I didn't get that job, maybe I need, you come to a conclusion. And then my favorite thing about it, it says action plan. And that's why we fail today. Because many of us, we have no action plan. I write down everything. I see, I'm serious. I like to write down what I want to do. And sometimes at the end of the year, I go back and I say, well, I didn't do that, I didn't do that, but oh, I did this one, amen. I did this one, I did this one. You have to have measurable goals and set them. And tomorrow you want to be famous is not a goal. <laughs> you want to be the VP is not a goal. You have to put measurable goals and then you accomplish them. So use reflective practice to do that, okay?